Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential series which demonstrates common skills, tips and techniques that you'll require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration you'll see how we can implement sequences within an ADF application. So most ADF applications you'll probably find will be based on Oracle database tables which will have primary foreign key relationships and one of the things you have to do in this application will be to assign unique values to those primary keys. So a primary key such as customer ID, department ID, order ID are unique values that we have to assign when data is written to that table. Now there are a number of different ways we could achieve this. We could do this within the application itself. So we write code in the application and at a specific point we read a database sequence and update an attribute value with that sequence number. The other option is we defer the applying of sequence numbers to a database trigger. So it's not until data is actually committed down to the database that a database sequence will be read and values applied at that point. So let's have a look at both of these examples. The first is we programmatically assign a sequence number inside the ADF application itself. So in pseudocode what we're doing is for a specific department when we create a new department, so a new records created within the application, we want to get a handle to the database transaction, read a database sequence number, and then get that value and apply it to the appropriate attribute, department ID in this case. So in a little bit more detail, we have our department's impo, which is the implementation object that references our department's entity object. It has a method called create, which is called whenever a new department is created. There's a call to get DB transaction, which will allow us to get access to the current database transaction where we can read a sequence number into an object called sequence simple. That represents a sequence number read from the database. And then we can call the department's simple dot set department ID. That's the appropriate method we're calling to actually set the value in department ID. So let's have a quick look at this in a demonstration. So here we have an example of departments. We have a department sequence defined in a database. And let's go and create the accessor and create method for our departments. So if we go to that Java class, you'll now see the method that's called whenever a new department's created. And there it is there. So let's add code. So first of all, we're going to create an instance of a sequence import object. And we'll import that. So sequence import equals new sequence import. And then we have to supply the name of the sequence that's in the database. Here we have departments seek, which we saw before, and then we make a call to get DB transaction to get the transaction to the database. And the next line, we now want to set the department ID to the value of the next value that's coming back from that sequence number, or that sequence simple object, and there we call get sequence number. Let's compile and run that. And there we see our departments. And let's create a new department. And there you can see the department ID has been automatically created there. and we can create another one, and there they see the sequence has been applied. Of course, there's one possible limitation with the example we've just seen, in that because the values are assigned within the create method and department's entity object, it means that if the transactions roll back, then those sequence numbers are lost. Now, that might not be an issue, but let's look at another example. And this is where we use a database trigger to assign a sequence number. 
And this means that sequence is only assigned when the data is actually committed in the database tables. Now this is actually a codeless solution in the ADF business components and what we have to do is define that an attribute, in this case our employee ID, is of type DB sequence. And what that means is it tells ADF business components that the value of this field will be deferred to be assigned by a trigger on the database. Now the only other thing we have to do is we can optionally set the attributes um, updatable and refresh after which will indicate if the employee ID is allowed to be updatable by the user, probably in this case it will be never, and also refresh after, which indicates that the value that's been assigned by the database trigger will be refreshed into the employee ID field automatically. So let's look at this in an example. So in this example, we'll apply a sequence to employees. There's our employee sequence. And we're going to create a trigger on the database to assign the sequence. So we can create a trigger here from JDeveloper and give the trigger a name. That's a database table trigger, new employee trigger. The name of the sequence that's going to be used and the values going into the employee ID column. So now we go into the entity object, change my employee ID to DB sequence and it's updatable never because we don't want the user to change that field. Let's OK. And now let's run and test that behavior. Now we can bring up our employees. We'll create a new employee. Now a temporary pseudo value has been input there, minus two. We're going to, that will be populated with the correct value by the framework in a second. Once it's committed, there's it. And let's finalize the details, the data we're putting in, job ID. And now commit that transaction and we see the employee ID has been updated automatically. So you've seen two different options for applying a sequence. One which was using the sequence simple object where we apply the sequence in code or using the DB sequence type on an entity object attribute. For more information you can go to the JDeveloper OTN site. Thank you very much for listening.